But in this case, the main thing you got to do is remember that north is that way, right? We drove in from the north and the road splits here. So this was very easy location to locate yourself. Before you go on, the other thing you want to do, anytime you go out in the field, use just the first location on a map that's the hardest. That's why GPS is wonderful, because you get that first question out of your head of what, am I really in this gully or am I in that gully or in that gully kind of thing. This only affects you usually if you get dropped by aviation like that guy, right? Uh, <laughs> but it, it can be a real problem. Anyway, what you should do once you locate yourself, anytime you're out in the field, is equate yourself with what's around you. And to do that, the first thing you need to do is look at the map scale and think about how far things are. Most of you are not good at judging distances. Most of us aren't so good at it. You get better at it as you practice a little bit. But so, how far away, for example, is that outcrop from me? The first outcrop there. 65 feet, 25 meters. 20 meters, tw yeah, 20, 25, probably 20 meters. See if that fits kind of roughly. That outcrop's right there. Mm -hmm. I'm standing about there. Let's see if I'm good here. Pretty close, probably about 20 meters. Flipping them off wouldn't be appropriate, right? Are you right, right Can we get a ride? <laughs> yeah, those bastards are going to sit down there. <laughs> They're going to give us a hard time. So, okay. So, you, you probably you can't see this on the back, but what you should look at is the distance on this map, right? So, from here to here, relative to the map scale, is about only about 300 meters, right? So this whole map is 300 meters in that direction, 300 meters in this direction. It's basically just beyond what we can see here, right? So it's a very blown up map. So you should locate yourself. There's a road here. We're gonna go down that road, right? There you can see that road, follow that road. Think about how far you go as we walk that direction or in this direction as we go over in this direction. Uh, you, it, what would you predict is going to happen? Where that, where's that road going to go as you go that way, even though you can't see it? It's going to run like across band. the railroad uh -huh. track, right? Yeah. right Some of you have been there before, so you know that, or most of you have probably been there before. But, uh, but you can see that on the map, right, even if you weren't there. That also gives you some, helps you some perspective, right, about how far it is. Mm -hmm. You should get into this sort of proportional perspective thing about how far things are. So you can see that top of the, of the hill there you can, is up over in here somewhere. Because these are closed contours that are that hill. Mm -hmm. And right there, there's some closed contours that are that hill. Mm -hmm. That gets you kind of perspective. Uh, keep that in mind as we go through the day and that'll help you a lot because then you know at least roughly where you are and then you can start proportioning where things are relative to that. Ready to look at that? Yeah. Okay. We'll start over here and we're going to do two things for a start. Uh, the, when you do geology, the first thing to know, there's uh, two things you need to know. One is, where am I? You got the map for that. And the second thing is, what are the rocks doing? And you can split that into what are the rocks and what is their orientation? What, is, what are the structures you see in them? So we're gonna spread out along the hill here and you guys are gonna start with the stuff you learned in chapters one and five of my text, which is grains, mean grain size, sorting, rounding, color. I want you in your field notebooks to write a good description of one hand sample from the rock. And then take out your compass and do us a strike and dip of the bedding. So before we do that, we haven't done You did this probably in tree, did this in processes before we move on. Define strike, someone. The direction in which the plane is perpendicular. 
it's a good classic vague thing that people usually say something mm -hmm. like that. What does what direction? What does what direction is what? Uh, well, you I mean, I'm right. right hand rule. No, 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 don't worry about right hand rule. Just what, basic. What's strike? What is strike? Horizontal. Horizontal. Okay. Horizontal what? Horizontal plane. Then plane? Or oh, is there a horizontal plane? But yeah. Are you thinking is that thing? You're right. Horizontal. And Felix so, added something. Yeah, I'm thinking is that thing too much? Correct. So put those together. <laughs> he said. The orientation, orientation relative to with, the north. Yeah, relative to north. We call that, simple word for that is azimuth. Azimuth. Mm -hmm. Compass direction. So, horizontal, there's one word missing. I'll say it. Line. <laughs> there is one and only one line on any inclined plane that is horizontal. It has two azimuths, one this way and a back azimuth. Either one is correct. You just have to be specific of how your nomenclature. And I always tell people, why in the world do we as geologists use strike? Anybody ever think about that one? I don't know their title does, does this for you or not. Why would you measure strike? And mathematician would never talk about the orientation of a plane relative to a line yeah, because it's changed see, so you can like kind of sort of look at your map and can uh, infer what you the, are right that it's it is for geologic map it helps it's so that you can see a fold even though you might not see all that, of it that is correct that's one infer. reason but there's another even more basic reason You're looking in three dimensions. not quite I'll, I'll tell you the answer relation because to the, of this mm. that's what I can measure with this uh, th this is just one other kind of compass, right? Mm -hmm. But what does a compass measure? Cardinal direction. It can measure the direction, but more specifically, do I hold a compass like this when I make a measurement? Mm -hmm. I have to hold it level. Best because in a standard analog compass, there's a balance needle that only operates when the, when the compass is level. If, if, if it's flying over like that, the needle sticks, right? So the only measurement I can make with this device is the azimuth of a horizontal line. And that's why we measure strike, because that's what we can measure with this. <laughs> <laughs> but it is useful, and we'll go through that a lot in class. So that's why, remember, you were taught this. You hold the, the compass up against a book, and you level the compass. And then you get that, that azimuth line. It's got two, I should hold, hold up the front. There are two azimuths, right? The compass is pointing in one direction and its back azimuth is in the other. Somebody should hand me a front. I'll remind you how that works. Right. On a front, yeah. this device wasn't invented for geologists either. It's a surveying device. <laughs> so it records the azimuth looking in that direction is the white arrow, and the back azimuth is looking in that direction. When the needle, when the needle is pointed the direction you're looking. Makes sense? Everybody remember that? Mm -hmm. When the uh the other thing this device measures is inclination. Right? Mm -hmm. And inclination is also limited by how you can measure it because you're also using a level bubble. And just like holding this flat, holding that thing like that does nothing for you because that some, you know, gravity is this way. What does you, to make a angle measurement or an inclination measurement, this device must be held in a vertical plane and then you level this mm -hmm. bubble, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that's dip, or in, any inclination is measured that way. And dip, what's dip then? <laughs> Perpendicular to, to the strike, that's one definition. It's 
You're right, Mom. That's one way to look at it. What's the, what's the other part of that definition then? The inclination of a line perpendicular to strike in the inclined plane. That's one definition. Uh, you could also think of it as the line of maximum inclination on an inclined plane, on any inclined plane. It's the one and only li one line that is straight down the inclination direction, or it's the direction water would run on that surface. That's another way to think of it. So if you've been drinking too much water, you can always find out uh. which way the, the dip is, right? Uh, <laughs> So, okay, that's enough for now. Let's just do that. Description. Make the and description. Measurement. And make the measurement. Uh, you probably forgot how, so don't worry about it.